Good morning and welcome to Highway Online this morning. I'm so glad you've taken some time out of your day to be with us here at Highway Online. If you're a newcomer to Highway Online, we want to know who you are. If you're a guest this morning, we'd ask you to help us out. We'd ask you to take your phone and text the word welcome to 416-267-1189. Don't know why I almost forgot that. 416-267-1189, which is the church number. And if you don't want to do it that way and you've logged into the chat, you should see a button coming up right now that says, we want to connect. You can also just click on that. Either way, fill out the prompts as we want to send you a more formal welcome in the mail in the next week or so. So please do that if you're our guest this morning. And we want to thank you again for being with us. Speaking of the chat, if you haven't logged into the chat this morning, we encourage you to do so because it's our way of knowing that you're here, but it's also your way of being able to see who's chatting and know who else is here with you because we are gathered this morning in community even though we're not in the same room necessarily. So take part in the chat, log in. If you've never done that before, you'll see three lines, uh, light gray lines at the top left-hand corner of your screen. You just click on those, use your email address, create a password, and set up your free account. And then you can log in every week with us here at Highway Online. I wanna share a couple of announcements with you of upcoming things before we go into worship and Pastor Dan comes with this morning's message. First of all, we have a men's barbecue coming up on Saturday, August the 27th at 11.30 a.m. You can go to our website, highwaygospel.ca, and you can sign up from there. There's a link that you click on and you sign up for your free ticket. As well, you can probably see behind me that the backdrop has taken shape because tomorrow is the beginning of Zoom Camp. So we wanna encourage you, if your child's coming to Zoom Camp, don't forget to bring them. Maybe you have a child that hasn't signed up yet. There's still time you can sign up tomorrow morning by coming to the building at around 8.30, sign them up. Zoom Camp is gonna be a great time. You can see again from the background and there's stuff you can't see that's off to the sides of me, but we are gonna have a great time here with the kids this week at Highway's Zoom Camp. The camp finale is also coming up on Friday at 5 p.m. We're going to have a barbecue here. So even if you don't have kids involved in, the, in Zoom camp or if you're not involved as a volunteer, we invite you to come for the barbecue Friday night at 5 p.m., Friday evening, I guess it is, at 5 p.m. That way you can be here and meet some of the parents and that is an encouragement to our community as we get to know our community and the parents of the kids and the kids that are here with us throughout the week. If you volunteered to be part of Zoom Camp, we want to remind you that tonight at 5 p.m. is a mandatory volunteer meeting. You must be here in order to volunteer for camp. So if you've filled out the volunteer application online, make sure you're here tonight at 5 p.m. I want to thank you for your ongoing support of the mission and the ministries here at Highway Gospel. You're giving helps us to carry out the ministry to you and the community here at Hi here around Highway. I want to remind you that there's four ways you can give. You can e-transfer the money, you can use the Tithely app, you can go to our website and click give, or right now in the chat should come up a button that says give. If you click on that, it will take you to our website and you can give that way. Finally, you can mail, I was going to say email a check, you can't email a check, but you can mail a check to us. Uh, make sure you don't mail cash. Um, and again, we want to thank you for your giving. And I want to say a special thank you today to all of you. We had set a goal of $2,000 to support Zoom Camp 2022, and we smashed through that goal. We have raised so far, because there might still be more to come in, but so far we've raised $3,200 and $80. So we're over half again what we asked for. So we smashed through the $2,000 goal and we thank you for that. For this morning's digital teaching notes, you can open the Uversion app and go to events and find Highway where you can follow along with Pastor Dan's sermon. You can add your own notes and you can save that for later if you want to go back and look at it. 
for everything I've talked about today, check out our website, highwaygospel.ca, and we encourage you as well to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I almost said Twitter, but on Facebook and Instagram and those encouragements that come out throughout the week for you. Before we go to worship, let's pray. Father, thank you that we have this opportunity through technology to come into your presence. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're with us wherever we're sitting right now. We're thankful that you know our needs before we can speak them out. But Lord, we come to you with our needs today. We speak our needs out to you today. We ask you to heal bodies today, to heal minds today, to release finances today where finances are needed, to change circumstances today where circumstances need to be changed. We ask that you do miracles in our lives today. Speak to us from your word today. Encourage us from your word today. Make us more like you as we hear your words today, your word today. Give us ears to hear what you have to say to us, hearts open to receive it, that at the end of today's service, we would be more like you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, speak into our lives now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thanks for being with us. And remember, Highway is a place to belong.
Well, good morning, Highway Online. It's so great to be back with you this week. We're continuing our summer series called Living with Assurance, where we're journeying through the letters that John wrote to the churches of Asia in the first century of the early church. John is concerned with the false teaching that's been going on in a number of the churches. The false teachers have come in and, and tried to lead the people astray. And we need to understand that John writes these letters with the heart of a pastor. A pastor who cares about the believers and the Christians in his care. He, you can tell this because he often refers to them as his children. Now, as you walk through the letter of John, especially 1 John, you're going to notice, or you probably already noticed, that he keeps circling around three main themes, the themes of love, obedience, truth. But what you need to understand is every time he circles around to them, he brings out another facet of truth. Every time he revisits it, he wants to take us to a deeper place of understanding. So today we're going to continue our series and we're coming to 1 John chapter 3, verses 11 to 22. So 1 John 3 is where we're at today. And in this passage, John talks about love, there it is again, love, in a manner that transforms our lives into the image of Jesus Christ. See, one of the main objectives of every Christian should be to become more like Jesus. And one of the traits of Jesus is love. And so again, John talks about love in this passage. Here John is showing us what love does. That's, that's the me main key this week. What does love do? And John reminds us that love is an action. It's a doing word. It's all about Doing. So let's begin with verse 11 and look at 11 to 15 right now. It says, For this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. Notice the opening words to this passage. Here it is again. John says, we should love one another. This has become John's go-to phrase throughout this book, and we're going to continue to see it. And so John says we should love one another. And then he moves into a story about a brother who did not love his brother, a story called Cain and Abel. Now, John's audience was probably very familiar with this story, but let me recap it for you. The story of Cain and Abel is found at the beginning of the Bible, in the very first book called Genesis, even in the early pages of Genesis, Genesis chapter 4. Uh, Cain and Abel were brothers, like I mentioned, and they are the sons of Adam and Eve. One day, the Bible tells us, Genesis 4, that they brought offerings to God, that Abel brought God an animal sacrifice from the firstborn of his flock, and Cain brought God fruits, some fruits from his soil. So these two brothers come and bring an offering to God, and Genesis tells us that God accepts Abel's offering but rejects Cain's. So God encourages Cain again. He says, Cain, don't be angry. Just go and bring me a proper offering. So what we assume here is that Abel's offering was proper because he brought the first fruits. It's important we talk about that even in our giving today to the Lord, that we give of the first fruits. We give of the first things that God gives us. And that seems to be what Abel did. But Cain just brought some 
of his produce. It's not a problem because one was an animal and one was a produce. That wasn't the issue. The issue is what they brought and the heart behind what they brought. And so God says, Cain, you got a do-over. Just go bring me a proper sacrifice and don't be angry. But instead, Cain was anger. And he became angry and jealousy rose up and he goes and he kills his brother Abel over that jealousy. Now with the backdrop of how one brother hates his brother, John moves directly to an opposite story. We pick it up in verse 16. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Compare these two statements that John makes. We should love one another is what he opened the first sentence with, the first passage with. And then he says, this is how we know what love is. So John compares the love of Cain against the love of Christ. See, Cain killed his brother. Jesus laid down his life. Cain killed the brother who loved him. Jesus died for those who opposed him. John here is showing us how love behaves. And as John is writing this love, if we were to dig down beyond our English to the, the Greek that's used, it's the Greek word agape. Agape is, is this word, a Greek word that really describes true love. This is the love that John wants us to know. Now, true agape, or agape, finds its fulfillment in the expression of Jesus' cross. We see love in action in the cross of Jesus. And the picture of agape is that Jesus died for the sins of the world. He died for everyone, including those who killed him. So this agape love is a self-sacrificing love. It's an absolute love. It's uncentered love, unconditional love. And agape is an action love. It's a verb. It's an action word. And what makes it actionable is an outward demonstration towards another person. It's the love that God uses when God looks at you. When God looks at you, he sees you with his agape love. In fact, Romans 5.8, we're told, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. See, God's love for us is expressed through action. God said, this, this is how God demonstrates his love. He sent Jesus to die for us. It's, it's actionable. It's not just platitudes or words or philosophy or thoughts or ideas. No, God said, here is my love. I put it out for you in action. Jesus dies on the cross for you. Let's pick up verses 17 and 18. It says, if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech but with actions and in truth. See, love with actions and in truth. That's what John said. True love is seen in action. True love is tangible. True love is noticed. True love sometimes takes work. Um, think of a, a couple who is in young love. You know what I mean. The couple finally find themselves in their early days of being in love with each other. And, and we, we notice because we see them. We see the way they look at each other, how close they sit together, how they can't walk anywhere without holding hands and hugging. And we see this young love in action. And we know that they're a young couple or a couple in young love because we see it. It's like that old saying, love is blind, but the neighbors ain't. It's because we could see it. And that's kind of what John is saying. If we love God, 
it should be noticeable in our actions. If the love of God is in us, it should be noticeable in our actions. See, loving God is a love of action. John says, how does love behave? It behaves in action. See, if being a Christian is about being more like Jesus, then our lives should love like Jesus. Now, this is not always easy. Let me be the first to tell you, it's absolutely not always easy. It's not always easy to follow God's word and to follow God's plan and to follow God's love. But from God's viewpoint, his viewpoint, he's always right. And we know that God is always right. See, a life where you become more and more like Jesus is a life where you learn to make sacrifices, where you learn to put your wants down for the love of other people. This agape love, this God love, this God-centered love is a love that is centered on other people rather than ourselves. This is a self-sacrificing love, not a self-centered love. Agape love is a love of action. John continues this thought as he, as he dives even deeper in verses 19 to 22. He says, this is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. In these verses, John is describing for us what love believes. See, if you're a follower of Jesus, then your behavior is an extension of God's demonstrated love towards you. It's also a reflection of what you believe in your heart. Four times in these verses, John uses the phrase, our hearts, our hearts, our hearts, our hearts. You see, because our hearts can be tricky. Are we assured or condemned? Are we convicted or confident? Do we know the truth? Or are we fooled? See, and John reminds us that our hearts can be unreliable. <clears throat> now, to truly understand what the heart is, that we're talking about, we're not talking, of course, of a, of a physical heart, and we're not talking just about our feelings. This concept of heart describes the inner self where we think and feel and decide. So it's, it's who we really are on the inside. It's our heart, our, our thinking, our feeling, our decisions. And John is saying, you know, sometimes we get fooled by our own selves. We, you, know, you know those times when you are having a, a debate with yourself, you're, you're facing a decision, and you're one, one, one hour you're sure this is right, and the next hour you think you should do this instead, and sometimes you go back and forth. Some of those things we lose sleep over because our minds are always racing. That's all part of it. Remember the words that God spoke through the prophet Jeremiah. In Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10, we find these words, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. <laughs> How encouraging. Who can understand it? The Lord search, I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. We're told that God alone is able to search and know our hearts. See, God knows the things you struggle with. They're not hidden from him. God understands when you're walking through trouble and turmoil in your mind. God is compassionate with you when you're wrestling out and wrestling in your faith. God doesn't judge your feelings. 
He says, your feelings are real. You could have them. But God examines our mind and our thinking. But we're also reminded that God measures our actions. There's that old adage that says, actions speak louder than words. And that's what, what John is teaching us here. That's, that's what the prophet Jeremiah was reminding us, that both of them are telling us that God knows our hearts, and at the same time, God watches our actions. What do your actions say? What do your actions say about you? See, the actions of a true believer really come from the outflow of a heart that seeks to know, love, honor, and please God the Father. What do your actions say? Are you living a life that pleases God? Are you aware that your actions make a difference? Do you understand that how you live must line up to what you believe or what you profess to believe. So you can't profess to love God and then walk in an opposite direction from God. See, John wants us not to just to feel love, but to live in love. That's why he's taken time in these verses to teach us how love behaves and, how, and what love believes. See, John is telling us that we need to walk in love. A love that is actionable. A love that is not based on feelings, but based on faith. And John uses the word agape to talk about this kind of love. And one more time, agape Love is unconcerned with the self and concerned with the greatest good of another person. Agape isn't born just out of emotions and feelings or even familiarity or attraction, but from the will and as a choice that you make. Agape requires faithfulness, commitment, sacrifice without expecting anything else. In return. See, your behavior should be based on truth, on what you believe, not on what you feel. So you can choose to behave contrary to your feelings. Let's go back to the opening illustration that John gave us. Cain became angry and killed his brother, even though God told him, don't be angry. You get a do-over. See, Cain chose to let his emotions, his feelings control him when God was asking him to trust God's faithfulness instead. So instead of your feelings control you, John is asking us and encouraging us, let faith control you. Even when you don't feel like it, obey God. Even when you don't understand why God would say such a thing, trust God. Even when you read the Bible, and the Bible directs you to live and act in a certain way, and you don't understand it, trust God's love for you, because God loves you with an agape love. So this is what John is telling us. The way of love is powerful. Love is action. And when we love God, it leads us to loving others. And if we have a hard time loving others, we really need to examine where we are in our heart with God. If you've been watching today and listening, and we've been talking about God's love, and maybe you're sitting there right now and you're saying, you know what, Pastor? I don't know God. I don't know God's love for me. I want you to know that we here at Highway Online exist to help you know the love of God. And if you would do me a favor and pick up your cell phone and text me one word, the word love, it's appropriate today, isn't it? Text the word love to 416-267-1189. That number's on your screen right now. If you would do that, 
Follow the prompts for your name and contact info. We will be in touch with you because we want to introduce you to the love of God and we want to introduce you to faith in God. So again, text LOVE to 416-267-1189 and we want to help you walk in love. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you today for John's encouraging words of love. How John reminds us that loving you is the first thing that we do and that that changes how we live our lives. That when we love you, we're able to love others. It's not always easy. Lord, help us. Help us when it gets difficult. Help us. Help us when our emotions get, get the best of us. Help us when our emotions may override our faith for a moment. Help us to turn to you in faith. We give you the glory and the honor, and we thank you today. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm so glad that you joined us today at Highway Online. And I trust you'll join us again next weekend online. Or if you live local, come on down to the Highway Building. We would love to meet you in person. As you can see, as you've already been told this morning, that tomorrow begins our Zoom camp. And maybe you have um, some kids between the ages of 5 and 12 and they're not registered. Bring them down tomorrow morning about 8.30. Register them in for our camp program. We'd love to have your kids with us. And maybe if you remember this week that you would pray throughout this week, pray for our Zoom camp that the love of God would touch the hearts of the children. God bless you. Have a great week. And remember, Highway is a place to belong.